Hey, how's it going everyone? We're going to do a multiverse tier list for every character in the game for 2v2s now that Rick is in the game. Uh, originally, I was only going to cover like newer characters and some characters I got changed uh, via updates. But I figured it makes sense to talk about every character since most people that use tier list videos are newer players and can use an explanation for each character anyways. So if you're looking for a certain explanation of any character, it is in the timestamp. Once again, uh, this is a 2v2 video. Now let's get into the first tier, which is average tier. Now, there are only four characters in this tier. I, I think these are only four characters that are below everyone else. Uh, first one being Garnet. Uh, Garnet is just has absolutely nothing going on for this character. Besides that her projectile is pretty good. You can uh, angle it. But and also her spike is also pretty good too. It's like another thing to not forget, but Garnet doesn't really have anything special going on for her, um, really besides that. Her buffs to her teammates aren't good enough to where she's worth picking, and she doesn't really excel at anything. She could use some good buffs. And the same thing applies for Taz. Taz has a pretty good projectile that you can use while falling, it can be a good combo starter. Uh, Tornado is a really strong move when it's Band and against bad players, Taz is actually a good character. I mean, he can swallow projectiles, but by the time he spits them back out, you're looking at like a 30 frames of like in invulnerability where you're not doing anything. You're very vulnerable to those attacks. I don't know why I said invulnerability. You're vulnerable to attacks, and when you're playing 2v2, uh, you can get rushed down while trying to just swallow a projectile where you can just normally dodge that for like a frame one, frame two, and it's really low down. So. Uh, but Taz has like a nice spike, that's you know, some decent ground combos, but nothing too crazy. You're only really playing this character if you're at low level, and you can get away with spamming, but there are much better spamming characters in the game, we'll get to them when we do. Next up is Iron Giant. Um, Iron Giant's an interesting case, because a lot of people will tell you this character is still very good, and I just quite won't. They get outsped by most of the roster. Uh, they have disjoint, but that doesn't really matter when it can kind of be hard to hit people since of their massive height. And just the fact that most of the top tiers have projectiles, which makes it really easy to turn Iron Giant into combo food. Uh, quite simply put, uh, Iron Giant just has a very bad matchup spread. It can die. Uh, can die pretty late, but a lot of characters that are also tanked can do a lot more than just live for a while. And I feel like Iron Giant just doesn't do too much. It's a good character, but once again, every, every character is playable in this game. Very playable. You're not going to just lose because you picked a character. Like, I'm not trusting in a Garnet player to be good. I'm expecting to beat a Garnet player, but it's not necessarily the case. And then next up is Velma. If you looked at Velma about two months ago, maybe three months ago at this point, uh, they were the best character in the game. Hands up. Uh, with everything they used to do, they were crazy. However, this is not that time anymore. Velma kind of does nothing on her attack. She has some decently good hitboxes, even now after the hitbox change. But her kill power isn't insane. Uh, her projectiles are pretty nerfed, uh, not terrible though, but they tend to home to areas where you don't want them to home. They're very inconsistent to where you end up homing them. And then she has a like a half screen beam, which is pretty good, but there's no effect on that like there used to be. Uh, one of the only debuffs she can do is a slow debuff that the opponent has to stand in. For it to even do anything, and if, since it's frost, it needs to get all stacks just to freeze. Um, yeah, she's really just not doing much. Um, she's still good. Like I said, every character is playable here. Uh, just because they are in the bottom tier doesn't make them a bottom tier character. I still run into Velma's that still beat me, even though I'm a top twenty thousand player, not to flex the rank or anything. <laughs> but I still, I can still run to a Velma that I'm so scared of. You still run into a Taz that will still beat me. You still run into a Garnet that 
will maybe beat me. You know, I've only been <laughs> beaten by like actually one or two Garnets, and one of them was today. Uh, I can still run into an Iron Giant that can still really hit me with the big hitboxes. But I'm not too scared of most of these characters in this tier list. In, in, in this uh, spe uh, tier. There we go. I don't know why that was so hard to say. The next up, we have the good characters. Now these are characters that are better than average, but they're not really good. Uh, by really good, I mean like a 8 out of 10 character. Or like a 7, like these are your pretty average 7 out of 10 characters. They excel in some areas, suffer in other areas, but overall, I can be pretty scared of some of these characters, and I'm not too scared of these characters uh, letting me down on my team, and I expect these people to be good. Uh, first up is Steven Universe. Uh, Steven Universe does not do a lot, but they can be really annoying. Uh, if you let them isolate, um, they're going to stop their teammate from getting comboed by just holding down block and shielding. Uh, they can set up and set shields around the stage and make it a hazard to navigate and just get in the way. Uh, Steven has self-healing and then ha can spawn like a third fighter extension that stays out there for quite a while. Um, and yeah, uh, Steven has some fairly strong neutral moves and uh, special moves uh, that you can make him a kind of scary opponent. Uh, the problem is, you don't really see people running this character. They're not like an insanely good support. I there is really no good, more good supports anymore that are actually good support. And you found it was that person because they healed. Uh, they healed themselves a lot and they healed other teammates. Their teammates a decent little bit. Now Velma only heals teammates a little bit, uh, but very inconsistent to get that healing. Oh, that doesn't pertain to Steven. Steven is just a strong character that you can get some usage out of. I don't use him. Most people don't use him. But he's not unusable. Uh, and next up is Arya. Arya is one of those characters where I feel like they would be uh, a bit better in the 1v1s, uh, where they can actually perform a lot of their combos without getting hit out of them. Um, Arya has a lot of true combos that can do a lot of damage and do a lot of crazy stuff that would be hard to comprehend uh, with a lot of like teleporting being behind you off like one move etc etc Arya is a bit scary however Arya doesn't have a lot of moves you get in and Arya trying to get in can be very predictable they're probably going to hit either the knife to teleport in or the side B and that's really their best tools for getting in it's not a crazy amount so that's kind of the one flaw of Arya, but if they get their hands on you, most of them know how to do pretty good combos. Uh, don't be scared of an Arya player if they have, if they're over like level 17, 18, they're probably good at the game. Um, next up is Rain Dog. Uh, Rain Dog is another support character that I feel like needs to do more supporting, uh, but Rain Dog is one of the most damage dealing characters in the game. Crazy enough, um, Rain Dog quite easily just does damage. They have a lot of flaming um, effect attacks that can like just stand the stage, good decent uh, decent projectiles, um, and then they have one move that tethers their teammate, and if you touch that line between the tether, you are taking damage from that, and that racks up to a lot of damage when they are playing very split up, because Brain Dog can kind of camp with their projectiles while their teammate rushes down and then you're taking damage trying to approach the rain dog from the projectiles and the tether. And if anything really bad happens, rain dog can pull the teammate back because they're on a tether. And then you can just get beat. Uh, rain dog is going to be quite terrifying. But um, once again, not a lot of people playing this character. When I see one, I'm a little nervous because they can be hard to kill and I know they're going to hurt to approach. And they can just do a lot of damage to me. Uh, but next up is Superman. Uh, Superman is a good character that I feel like once you get better at the game, you're no longer scared of. When I broke my computer, uh, the battery in the laptop is screwed up, and I don't have the battery replace it right now. Um, I used to play on keyboard and mouse. Uh, so when I had to learn how to play controller before where I am right now, where I'm like, I got it decently figured it out, um, this is one of the most terrifying characters because I was once again bad at the game. Um, 
Superman is a character that is pretty easy to counter because they play pretty predictably. But if you let them hit you with some of their moves, they're going to do a lot. Um, Superman has um, command grabs, which are very, very strong. One of them is their up B, which they can use a three downwards, which if you approach them off stage, they grab your event, you're going to die at almost 90%. Um, if they hit their side B grab off stage, which they can use while flying, which is their side B, uh, you can die at very early percents. However, besides that, the character doesn't have too much going on for them, besides being pretty hard to kill because they are a tank, and they are very tanky. Um, they have a lot of long moves on the moves, which makes it hard to attack them when they're not just spamming grabs. And laser can be pretty useful, not too, too, too useful, bro. And yeah, they just have a lot of armor. It can be hard to kill them because they're tankiness. And if you're dumb and get yourself grabbed, you can see the end of your stock at a very high, easy, low percent kill. Uh, overall, not too bad. They are pretty slow, so if you're playing a character with a disjoint or a projectile, you can kind of easily uh, beat out Superman. It's more so about outplaying them and trying to read them rather than trying to mash on them, because this is a character you can't just mash on. But once you get the match on, match up down, they, they pretty much fumble. Um, next up is Batman. Batman is an interesting case of a character because uh, they have one of the highest ceiling, ceiling gaps in the game. Seriously, probably a top 5 hardest character to play in the game. Uh, and most of it comes down to how hard it is to kill with Batman. It is the one thing that holds this character down is that they're a vertical character. But now a lot of vertical characters really struggle to kill because vertical hitboxes aren't as lenient as horizontal are, meaning, and it's also a lot harder to just line up a vertical kill than it is for most horizontal kills. So Batman only has like one killing move, which can struggle to kill at low percents. Um, you could be looking at like an 100, at like a 100, where you're still not killing when it's uh, one kill move, which is empty. And now you'd think, oh, why isn't he lower? It's because it's a pretty good combo game. Um, his battering is the, the best projected on the game, or at least close to it. Um, and they can just really mess you up. It's just they gotta get really good at landing those kill moves, which if they do, they make the character not bottom tier. Um, and they have, I mean, also the smoke's really good, the grapple's good for movement. Um, but that's about it. Batman's really not that bad um, once you get good at him. Definitely a character that if they get a few buffs is going to skyrocket because people are already really good with Batman. And he has a lot of things going on with him that if he just gets a little bit of a buff, he will jump up the tier. As, as soon as he is just, it's free to kill with him. It's a lot easier, like some of the higher tiers. Uh, and next up is, I think the last tank in the game, I think it's just the three of them as of right now. Between Iron Giant, Superman, and Wonder Woman. The next up is Wonder Woman. Um, she's a good character. I think she is the best tank because she has the best speed, but can still live about as long as the other ones. I've had games where I've seen that like 170, even not dying as Wonder Woman. Um, she's really tanky. She has decent speed, a lot of good movement on some of her moves. Her moves hold back pretty decent power. Uh, her just Biggest problem is she doesn't have a lot of range. She has one projectile that's on a cooldown, but it's a pretty long cooldown too. Um, that's really just kind of her problems. Her attacks are a bit stubby. Her disjoints don't disjoint that far. And yeah, I mean, she's a good character. You will get use out of her. Um, her ability to shield her teammates with several of her attacks, almost all of her attacks in some sort of way can give Shields to the teammate, and then her down special shield is also very good um, because that just literally neg uh, negates one hit. Um, and yeah, she's really good. Her signature perks are also pretty good. I haven't really mentioned any of those yet, but those are kind of into it. I'm not giving like very in, in detail character discussions, just simple ones, uh, just to get the gist. But um, she just has a bunch of decent things going on for her. Just Lacks a bit of kill power, which as a tank isn't a problem, but not a character you might want to run to a 
And the last one in good tier is LeBron. And there is literally one thing that if they did would make LeBron a very good his character who'd go up a tier immediately, almost top tier, is if they made LeBron's projectile a heavy projectile. Now, if you don't know, in this game, there are two types of projectiles. There's a projectile and a heavy projectile. Now, projectiles destroy projectiles, but heavy projectiles destroy projectiles. Again, heavy, of course, destroy heavy. Uh, LeBron being able to lose his ball very easily to sometimes with certain characters like Gizmo being a frame 2, frame 3 uh, projectile really destroys his character. LeBron doesn't just get infinite balls. LeBron has to either hit the opponent with certain means like up air, uh, I think down air, side air, most of the A moves that aren't just neutral, um, neutral air. And LeBron has to steal his ball back, and if it can get easily destroyed, uh, it's a little different if you lose the ball because you threw it off stage. That's a skill issue. Uh, but if you're telling me I can shoot at someone and then decide to shoot back, that I should lose the ball, that I have to get in to get in, to get when LeBron is a zoning type character. That's the kind of the big problem with LeBron. However, LeBron can do a lot of damage, and uh, the basketball is very. It is still very strong. It is very intrusive. Um, it can rack up a lot of damage, and a lot of the LeBron B moves that involve his ball are just very, very good in general. Uh, down B is a very good spike move when you're on uh, ledge. It will just send straight downwards off the stage. Um, obviously, neutral B will throw the ball, so and that's a very good move. You can do it. You can do like 7 damage per hit, and when you can use it multiple times if they're very closely to rack up those free couple hits, it really can stack up. Uh, there are some good LeBron special perks, but most of them aren't very good. Uh, LeBron, just with side B, can slam dunk, which can lead to kills. It's one of his best kill moves that aren't just gimps at ledge or off stage with the ball. Trying to hit like 6 things, which can happen when you're actually good at the character. But... LeBron kind of excels at destroying your, the opponent off stage or playing safely with the ball. It can lead to some good damage, some good kills, but none of the kills come really easily. You have to be good to get kills with LeBron. Uh, super fun character, though. So now we are ready to move to the really good tier. The first character in the really good tier is Jake. Uh, Jake. It's a pretty good character, and there's really two moves that are doing it for the character that you kind of nerf these moves a little bit more. Uh, and then Jake is like a bottom tier character, and it's mostly forward air and down air. Uh, down air, not so much as forward air. Forward air is just a massive disjoint that can stretch, and you can angle it so you can spike people while you're very, like, while you're on stage, and you can kind of clip to the stage when you're on. Dumb move. Um, but besides that, Jake does not actually have a lot going on for them. Um, their up B is actually used as an up B, unlike most characters that are not actually a thing, some of them are just moves. Uh, an example is Bugs Bunny. Very good example. And Sable Harley Quinn. Oh, excuse me, it's like midnight. We're not recording this. <clears throat> but Jake does not have a lot going for them besides two very busted moves, because down there you can hit like three times in a row. Does really good damage. It comes out pretty quickly, and it's a very strong spot move. But it's mostly that forward air. Um, next up is Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is a good character. Uh, pretty good projectiles can lead to explosively fast kills. Uh, they used to have uh, pretty close to infinite com combos, uh, but those have been a lot of rework nerfed. So Harley Quinn combos aren't nearly as crazy, though she still has some of the best combo gain. Uh, most of the roster, uh, but she does a lot of damage. Uh, can really s set her traps up around the stage to kind of dodge and weave and force fights into certain areas where she could get a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Once again, is um, is I'm tired. Uh, but she's a glass cannon. Thing is, it's pretty hard to catch her because of just because of how how much she doesn't weigh and makes her speed really quickly. But you will get good usage out of Harley. 
he will do the damage you need her to do. You just gotta be good at maneuvering the stage well enough to not get hit. Because she can die like 80. Also, like weaker characters. Next up is the new character, Rick. And now, in my opinion, in one of you ones, Rick is probably a top three character. But I don't play a lot of one of you ones, so you're not here for that. I don't talk about one of you ones for a reason. I don't play it. I'm not here for that in this game. I'm here for two v twos. I think this game, the game is built around it, so I think it's like the main thing you should be playing, even if you're like a Smash person. I was from Smash. I used to play a lot of Smash Ultimate. It was like one of the first fighting games I got into, but I still play two v twos. Anyways, rant aside, uh, Rick is really good. Rick has a pretty good combo game. Uh, can play neutral really well. And has a, a lot of projectiles that are pretty strong. Um, yeah, that's it's, it's kind of hard to describe uh, Rick because he is still fairly new. It's kind of hard for me to put in terms what he can do. But I feel like if you play him, you will kind of understand that he's fairly strong. Uh, he can knee seek stall. He takes a knee seek. Doesn't put it. Uh, doesn't exactly use it right away. Use other me seeks. He can do a lot of setting up. Uh, his portals are very good with certain characters, like LeBlanc actually has some pretty good synergy with Sit and Rick, etc. etc. Uh, it can be hard to kill him off stage. He has a lot of mix ups to kill you off stage. Uh, if you do the uh, forward tilt combo, you will send a missile that can kill them. Uh, you have down air, you have forward air, you have up B, you have charge air, which probably isn't going to kill, but it's in there. Um, you can send knee sticks off that stage, which would be uh, neutral B. Uh, almost all of his moves have some can do something off stage. Rick is pretty good. Give him a shot if you haven't yet, because this will be the third day of this season when I post this, because the last video got messed up. And once again, I do record these at night time, so I'm not going to sit there and re-record when it's that late. But uh, next up is Morty. Morty is an interesting character because um, I don't understand Morty at all. I will probably say this every tier list I do on this game, but I don't understand Morty. I really don't. Uh, there's a lot going on with the character. They have like, um, they can weaken projectiles through their force field that they use to teleport like Rick, which is mostly because it's, it's, it's like it's a Rick and Morty character. Uh, they have some, their forward tilt combo is insanely strong. One of the strongest moves in the game come out of that, which is the hammer. Uh, grenades are insanely lethal when you get really good at them. Uh, Morty is probably the hardest character to play in the game. I would stand by that. I'm pretty confident in saying that. Sorry, I yawned. Um, but Morty... There's a lot of power behind some of these moves, and then some of them aren't as strong. You go watch uh, Void put Morty in his recent video, which I'll link below because he did it for when Rick and Morty came out. Uh, he makes that character look very dominant, and he proves that the character is pretty strong. Um, Morty just has a lot going on for them. Some of their things are a little weaker. Uh, like, if you hit him off stage, he can die like, pretty easily. Uh, the only source of recovery they really, really have is going through portal and up B, but up B has an insanely long cooldown because it's calling the ship. It's not something that's going, going to help you quickly either. So that's kind of the only problem with Morty. Uh, you get him off stage, he can just be dead. Uh, and next up is Gizmo. Gizmo is one of my favorite characters in this game. It's not a character I've played since my computer stopped working. Uh, just I'm afraid I don't think I'll like them on controller, but uh, Gizmo's really fun. Gizmo's mostly fun for the fact that you can use him as either a setter upper, which is probably the better way to play it, the character. But it's also pretty hard to do in twos, or you can play him like an absolute god of a rushdown, which they are. Uh, Gizmo has one of the best projectiles in the game. Sorry. And probably the best projectile in the game, which is their bow shot. Their bow shot is a very quickly actable move. That you can easily combo in, which you, you can use it mid air too. I mean, like, it is a mid air move that it comes out very quickly. I won't be surprised if the move gets a pretty big nerf, just not be nearly as quick because you can shoot it with no charge and it is a free combo starter. It's very hard to react to, 
and most times you're just gonna hit by it. You can also charge it up to do a pretty good shot that can kill if caught off stage. And also when you take the chance to actually set up with your sing and your popcorn, you could do like 40 hit damage off like one hit, which is really crazy. Um, and yeah, Gizmo just has a lot going on for them. Quick, hard to catch because they're short. Uh, not that they're really short, uh, but short enough to where it can be kind of hard to, to get them. Uh, very fun character. Do recommend them. Um, definitely would be probably better than ones where they have an easier chance of setting up, but I do think they're a top five character. So uh, Next up is Finn. Finn is a good character because they have a sword. I actually don't need to explain more than that, but I'm going to a little bit. Um, Finn has some insanely busted moves. Down tilt one of them, which lunges characters forward and then spikes them if they're at wedge, which is also a pickup move. So basically, you can just get spiked for being a little too close to the ledge. Uh, backpack is also a pretty good move. It doesn't suck in, so if you get hit by it, you can get out of it if you're lucky. But if you get hit with backpack off stage, it can see the end of you. Um, and just having a disjoint means they have a very good matchup spread. Um, a lot of the low tiers, lower tiers, get beat by Finn. Simple as that. Uh, the only thing Finn doesn't have is a good projectile. Uh, they have a crystal that they, they can use to teleport to, which is really good for recovery. That they can pick up, then throw, but it's never really worth it. Uh, then Finn also has a shop where if you use it, the best thing to get is just boost your movement speed. And then it's really hard to kill you. Especially when you can teleport to a gem. Um, yeah, I don't think I need to go in more detail. Uh, Finch is really good. If you play him, you get it. Um, and the next up is Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny has some of the strongest perks in the game. Not perks, um, projectiles in the game. And it's just overall a nuisance. Uh, their spike is really strong. Uh, their projectiles are really strong. They control the match just because of how big projectiles are. You really gotta play around those projectiles, especially when they're really good at setting up. If they have two stacks of coffee zilla, uh, have fun. Uh, but like once again, a lot of the uh, A moves are just pretty strong, and a lot of the specials are their projectiles where they're just really strong. Um, also, when you take in the fact that they have a charm move that will stop your character in place and can keep them there for a long time. Uh, it can really get you messed up. Don't over. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a mess right now. Um, don't overestimate the like. Don't underestimate the fact that you think you can just rush your bugs running because bugs running has some very strong close range moves. Um, very dominant character. One of those characters that once again you face them, you kind of figure it out. And now we're here to the top tier. The two characters that are just the strongest in the game, and one of them is going to get a very long, lengthy rant. Hopefully kidding. Um, you're the top tiers. Uh, Shaggy is the dumbest character in this game, the most unfun character in this game, the most bullshit character in this game, the character that I wish was in this game that makes me like the character even less than the actual cartoons. I hate this character. Uh, this is not an overestimation of the character. Almost everything they have is absolute bullshit. Um, that takes no skill to use. One of the easiest fighting game characters of all time. You will just win because they refuse to nerf this character in any substantial way. Uh, basically, Shaggy has some of the most broken moves in the game with uh, side B. You get armor on down B when you're in air. Uh, they have a pretty bad projectile, but they have one. Um, their spike is pretty free, uh, their up air hurts, their up B really hurts. It's it's easy to list the things that they don't have, and that is a consistently good projectile. The end. Um, Shaggies have, can typically have pretty good movement, a lot of strength behind a lot of their hits. It can be hard to kill sometimes too, because of how it is easy for them to move. Uh, Taz is just a, I'm sorry. I'm used to saying Taz is a broken meme because back when I first started doing tier list content, uh, not that I posted any, but he was like the best character in the game. But Shaggy's dumb. I hate Shaggy so much. If you play Shaggy, I'm sorry, but you're lame. 
and I can't stand you. Um, anyways, the last character is Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry has received merits. Uh, it doesn't matter. Tom and Jerry, what makes them really good is the, almost every move they have is a projectile, which leads to just an insane amount of onslaught. The best thing you could do to a Tom and Jerry is rush them, so that way they can't. Um, so that way, geez, I, I don't know why I'm yawning so much. I'm not even that tired. The best thing you can do is rush them, because if they don't have time to set up some of their better projectiles, they're looking in the worst spot. But they still have very strong uh, normals. They still have, even even some of their just not set up projectiles are still very strong. So even though you are rushing them, don't underestimate the fact that you will get spiked. And up air is one of the craziest moves in this game uh, with that character. Um, just kind of look out. They're one of the hardest characters to play in the game. Not the hardest, but one of. And it really takes a lot of getting used to setting up with that character and learning how to in, engage off neutral to set up your projectiles with it takes a lot of synergy to work well with a Tom and Jerry but having a friend that's a Tom and Jerry player gets you kind of used to it so maybe you guys should just have friends that play Tom and Jerry and also having just friends in general would help but hey I'm sure you have a lot of friends um, but that's gonna be all for this video I'm really just insulting you guys now um, I need to go to bed um, Thank you for watching this video. If this helps you at all, uh, feel free to leave a like. I do tier lists whenever new characters come out, and nothing more. So if you want more tier list content, uh, feel free to subscribe. Um, yeah, thanks again for watching.